Hey guys, it's Zach here and welcome to the Super Paper Mario Ultimate Glitch Showcase video. In this video, I'll just be going over all the main glitches using the any% percent run as well as some super fun glitches you can easily try yourselves too. Some of you may be wondering how is any% percent only beaten in 3 hours and 48 minutes? Once you see just how broken the game is, you'll be thinking how is any% percent so damn long? Hope you guys enjoy. Super Paper Mario actually has four glitches that are used just about everywhere in the entire run. The first and most well-known one is the Thudley Jump. Essentially, when you use Thudley, if you press the 1 button, you can actually cancel Thudley's animation before it finishes. What's really cool is that there's actually one frame where Mario is in the grounded state, so you can actually do a flip so you can actually perform a double jump. The best part is you can actually repeat this infinitely. This means we can gain as much height as we want in any room in the game after collecting Dudley in 3-2, saving about 10 minutes over the course of an entire any% percent run. It's also worth noting that this grounded frame happens in a few other places, such as exiting a door in the air, after getting an item text in the air, the end of a livestream animation, when hitting a ceiling with high speed, and just so many more. Another awesome method of double jumping is with an enemy and 3D damage. When you're carrying an enemy above Mario with Thoreau, if you jump and take 3D damage near the height of Mario's jump, you'll actually bounce off the enemy and perform a double jump, which is very helpful in a few places of the run. It started by being able to just clip through one specific wall exclusive to 3-3 with Bowser, Slim, and a damage source. Later, it was found to be possible on any wall using all of these and a gold bar. While unslimming, the item collection cutscene actually keeps you part way into a wall, so we can just use a shell shock to take damage to clip right through the wall. This was only possible in 2D, however. A huge discovery was made in late 2020 where we could actually clip through any wall, even in 3D with just a gold bar and slim. We could literally go through any wall in the game which opened up ridiculous possibilities. As of right now, this trick is used 13 times in the any% percent category, and this is a list of all the uses. Now that we know the history of it, performing it is actually super simple. All you do is jump onto a gold bar while slimmed, press 1 and 2 at the same time to open the quick menu, switch pixels, and then hold towards the wall to clip through. There's actually three different ways to get the midair pause to perform a gold bar clip, some not even requiring a gold bar. One way is to breathe fire onto a gold bar, which is impossible in 3D so it's pretty much useless. Another method is by jumping under this specific ceiling while slimmed and switching pixels. It's completely unknown why this ceiling works, but it's likely an exact height that causes this, as we just can't do this with any other ceiling. If we could do a clip of this nature like really fast without a gold bar, it'd probably save about 30 seconds over the whole run just so we wouldn't have to throw the gold bar so many times. The final method is using a midair pause which can only be done in certain areas with a ceiling and an enemy. When you you bounce off an enemy and you can actually pause right when you hit the ceiling. In 2-1 in this clip here, you can actually save 20 seconds by hitting the switch in the background. Sadly, this is actually task only though, since it's a ridiculous one frame trick. Another method to clip through some walls is found during the routing for the 2 button challenge. By flipping midair using a thudly jump or any other means, you can actually hold up or down while you do the flip jump, which actually clips you through very specific collision. It seems limited to only a few places in the game and it's only for one trick in the run, but more uses can absolutely be found. Unlike the gold bar clip, this glitch is a lot more limited, however its uses are not to be underestimated. This trick is an extremely fast clipping method that also works underwater. As of right now, the corner clip is performed 9 times on the run, 2 of which are underwater, and this is the list of all its uses as well. To perform one of these corner clips, you want to jump at a corner perfectly so that Mario will just touch the corner without going on top of the ledge. Once Mario is at the corner, the 2 button must be held to clip through. All of this has to be in a duck jump, otherwise the clip doesn't work. To to perform one of these corner clips underwater, Mario must take 3D damage into a corner like this. The Fleep Ledge Cancel is a glitch where while using Fleep, the game has the 2D state while you're still flipping back from 3D, meaning you can interact with objects from a solid distance away. There's actually 5 different methods of performing an FLC which are as follows. 
Unfortunately, only two of the five are actually used currently, but others definitely have potential. Currently in the run, there's actually five uses of FLC, which are listed here. This glitch is still relatively new and just has so much potential to be used across the whole game. One last thing to note is that these four glitches can be used in conjunction with each other. For example, we can use a gold bar clip and then do thudly jumps to reach a higher area out of bounds, or we can perform a gold bar clip and then do a fleet ledge capsule. The possibilities are endless. So now that you know about the four main glitches, what if I told you that Super Paper Mario had a major exploit where you could beat the game without collecting certain pixels? If you complete a level without having a pixel, on certain occasions, that pixel will automatically be given to you upon hitting the star block. The game has a failsafe programmed in where the pixel will be placed in your inventory, and a text box will appear after the level notifying you of your new pixel. However, this failsafe only works on 5 of the 8 pixels that we collect in an any% percent run. Thankfully, we do have skips for all 5 of these pixels. Let's take a look. To complete Chapter 1-2 the intended way, we must traverse down a pipe and collect our first pixel, Thoreau. Then talk to Old Man Watch It, and finally talk to Green to lower the bridge. However, we can skip all of this by performing a trick known as Green Bridge Skip. This trick used to be done by doing a life shroom jump over the final gap, but it's now done using some very precise movements. We first get out of bounds by doing a trick called Shop Clip, then we make our way to the area right in front of Green's house. To get there, we can either use some more precise movement around the Old Town houses, or we can save while falling through the ground, and reset the game so we respawn in the middle of the room. After this, we line ourselves up for two frame-perfect movements. The first movement has a consistent setup where we hold down left for one frame. This input can be buffered using the pause menu and the home menu. The second movement is very difficult, where we must hold up for four frames. If everything works correctly, you'll land on an invisible plane in the background, and you'll be able to climb very high up and jump over the final gap. Unfortunately, due to the invisible vertical plane being a tenth of a unit big, there's about a 40% chance of landing on it even if you do the movements correctly. A better setup would be incredibly useful for this trick, especially if it made the final 4 frame movement consistent. But for now, this is the fastest known method of doing green bridge skip, saving about 2 minutes and 20 seconds over completing the level normally. For the next pixel skip, let's head over to 2-1 where we can skip having to go down a pipe and collect Boomer. We normally need Boomer to reach this set of doors, but we can easily make it up here by jumping off the Jobbas' head, or a simple 3D flip jump. Once we're up there, we need to hit this blue switch from the floor below. A long time ago it was found we can use a life shroom jump to make it up there, but this wasn't totally worth going for in runs since the life shroom jump is a one frame trick that can't be attempted again and it occurs 40 minutes into a run. Thankfully, a runner named Mohawk found that the switch could be hit by throwing a shell shock onto the ledge above. This opens up the final door to the level and we receive Boomer upon hitting the star block. This trick saves a minute and 20 seconds. The next pixel that can be skipped is Slim in 2-3, in which there are two parts to the trick. First, we have to clip through the lasers to get to the safe with 1 million rubies. We could use a live stream jump to clip through these lasers, however the best version of the trick utilizes the alternate clipping method which was mentioned earlier in this video. When flipping back into 2D while up against the lasers, you can hold up or down to clip right through them. The final part to skip Slim is really simple. While in 3D, you line yourself up on the glass at the left side of the room. From there, you can run forward, jump, and hold upright to clip through the iron bars. This trick saves 35 seconds. Previously, it was known that we could skip getting carry, however the trick was only used in tasks due to consisting of ridiculous lovely jumps under a low ceiling to save 20 seconds. However, Zack was able to find a better method that required two shell shocks, making the trick slower but at least RTA viable. Finally, after gold bar clipping was discovered, it made carry skip fully RTA viable and very fast. By gold bar clipping out of bounds in 3D, we can simply walk past the spikes on the left side of the room. 
This method made the trick save over 30 seconds. The final pixel we're able to skip is Dottie in 5-4. This level has gone through so many iterations at this point, there will probably be an entire video about it in the future. Dottie skip was initially found by John P55, where we can use a gold bar to clip into a small hole in the wall, walk to the left, and grab a key card with Thoreau. This skipped the entire process of obtaining Dottie, saving around 2 minutes. However, this trick was later improved upon when Scanner Skip was found. There are numerous different versions of Scanner Skip, but the fastest method currently consists of gold bar clipping out of bounds in 3D, standing on the ledge, and performing an FLC to enter the door to the painting room. This current method cuts the old level time in half, saving 4 and a half minutes. At the end of 1-3, there's a weird object that has strange collision. This object actually has a star block inside of it. So if we jump into the wall right here, Mario will land on ground. So long as we keep holding up, Mario will keep walking until we hit the wall. All you have to do is flip before you hit the wall and you can actually hit the star block. This saves 15 seconds. By using a corner clip and some clever out of bounds movement, we can actually jump up to the higher part to collect the key early. This trick saves 20 seconds in the run. This run actually requires a load of coins. 300 for the pipe to flip side flop side, 140 for the mighty tonics, and 20 for various sequences. To cut down on coin grinds or selling lots of items, we use a simple clip in the corner here by holding upright and then opening the chest. This trick saves about 10 seconds in coin routing and removes a lot of RNG. It's incredibly unlikely that a coin route will be faster or more consistent than what we got here. By using a 3D gold bar clip and placing Boomer out of bounds, we can flip while in bounds so Boomer lands on the platform below. We can explode Boomer to hit the block. This trick saves one minute. This trick is really awesome and has a lot of potential for other places in the run too, but currently is only used in 4-4. When taking 3D damage against certain interactable objects like chests and door locks, you can actually open them. To get the first chest we do a thudly jump then use a home menu buffer to buffer the damage. For whatever reason the timer for the 3D bar keeps going while the home menu screen is appearing, so it lets us damage us in the air at any time. The second chest in 4-4 actually requires just a full jump and waiting patiently for the 3D bar. These two tricks combined save one minute. Using a 3D gold bar clip and an FLC to open the door, we can skip the scanner in 5-4. This trick skips Dotty and saves four and a half minutes. Using a gold bar or the old method which used Thudley Drums, we can actually skip a few Merlin cutscenes. This saves 30 seconds. In 6-1, only two of the 20 fights doors are actually openable before triggering the cutscene to start the fight. We just use a corner clip and some out of bounds movement to get to each door. If there was only a way to open the doors that the action was deactivated, uh, but it seems impossible. These two skips combined save a minute and 10 seconds. In pre-chapter 7, we actually used two corner clips to skip flipping the water switch a few times. This saves 40 seconds. Using 40 plus Thudley jumps, we can actually skip getting Peach back in 7-3. This trick is very difficult in RTA runs, and it's been looked by for many runners to skip doing this trick, or at least make it a little easier. Rainbow Bridge skip actually only requires four Thudley jumps and saves seven minutes which is to this date the biggest time save in SPM, closely followed behind Scanner Skip. Using a gold bar clip or an FLC, which is the fastest method, we can open the chapter 8 door without triggering the null room cutscene. This saves 25 seconds. Let's start with one of the coolest animation glitches SPM has ever seen. If you do an FLC right next to a ladder and climb up while unflipping, you'll actually get the unused ladder animation. If you throw an enemy in 2D and flip into 3D right away, Mario's feet actually won't move anymore for whatever reason. Let's go over a few glitches you can actually do with just Kibby. So if you fall off the flip side tower and then start pointing at the screen, Mario will actually float there in the air until you stop pointing, of course. If you point Tippy at the screen while landing on Cyrus, it can actually have some very funny side effects. The same thing with the spring in 5-2 here, Mario's just in two places at once, it's kind of crazy. If you're slim then you switch pixels right next to an enemy, Mario can get damaged during the pixel switch cutscene. This seems very useless but it actually has some crazy side effects. The first one is the 0 HP glitch which seems purely visual. Mario's pretty much just at 1 HP and the annoying high pitch sound won't play anymore but if you take 1 HP more Mario's just dead. Unlike Jump Sword in TTYD, when you jump after climbing a ledge you actually won't levitate infinitely but it still has some funny uses. You can do it as many times as you want with Thudley so you can play the music inside 
some levels or something like that anyways. If you do this underwater, your character will moonwalk, which is just hilarious. If you switch pixels while slimmed on the switches in this level, Mario slides infinitely, softlocking the game. This game actually only checks your underwater state when leaving or entering the water from intended locations. So if you exit the water from an unintended location, Mario just keeps swimming, so you can just swim in the air. If you enter water from an unintended location, Mario keeps walking underwater, which is pretty funny. Just like the tippy glitches earlier, if you use Dottie on the frame you land on the transition here, you can get some very funny side effects. This one's actually used quite a few times in the any percent run. It just saves like a second here and a second there. Uh, so if you open a door while it's off screen, it actually skips the door animation and just fades to the next rim right away. Here's the easiest place to do one. When an enemy spawns out of a pipe, if you use Boomer to explode it at a certain time, they actually walk around upside down, which is very hilarious. Something really cool in this game is if you save at a save block while out of bounds, the game will actually respawn you at the origin of the rim. It was used in old routes to do green birch skip, but this setup takes so long that it'll be tricky to save time with again. Let's save the best for last, the home menu glitch. When you press the home menu when you land on a spring or a cloud, your character will look like it's just flying upwards. The sad part about this is that it actually ends at about the same time as a normal spring or normal cloud ends, but if we could get this animation to keep going and just levitate infinitely, we could likely use it to skip peach skip, which would be super useful. Now back to my main question, how is this game so long? Well the sequence is super strict so most time saves that are going to be found in this game without a huge sequence break would likely be within the levels and making those levels faster. Because in the pre-chapters we're just chasing each sequence position as fast as we can, there's just so much we can do. We can clip through any wall, gain infinite height, and even interact with objects from far away, yet the game is still 3 hours and 48 minutes long. My main hope with this video is that we can work together as a community to to keep finding more in this awesome game. If you'd like to help in any way possible to push this game even lower, please join the SPM Discord. Link is in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.